my name is Rodrigo Oliveira. Uh, some people know me as Roddy as well. I am a portrait and editorial photographer from Rio de Janeiro. I grew up in Barra de Guaratiba. It's a very small town. It's a coastal community. It's in the peripheries of Rio, so it's not uh, in, in the city center or the most touristic place. Um, Barra de Guaratiba is, um, you know, has this huge mangrove, as you can see in the bottom image. Um, and growing up here, I'm like geographically isolated from everything. And in, you know, and, and for that reason, I feel like it's also a place that has been sheltered from violence, from, uh, you know, all the, the bad things you can get from living in a big city. And Rio is amazing, but it's also very chaotic. But Baja de Guarachiba has been an awesome place to just uh, make me feel safe and make everyone, you know, have like a, a slower uh, life pace, which is really good for my creative workflow. Um, I was raised by my grandmother and my great grandmother, and my family has been really important to me. Um, they are Catholic, and although you know it's my grandmother doesn't really understand um, you know um, some of the things that that make who I am, um, but um, my whole family has just shown me like unconditional love and being like really nice to me and and just like showing me that regardless of the decisions that I make and if they do or do not understand me, um, they do love me. And, and I think that this is what also like gave me a lot of like a sense of respect for everyone that I work with. Um, so like I live isolated from everything and um, everyone else. Like I live up in the woods. Uh, so my house is pretty much like the, the last one where I live. Um, and I felt like I felt comfort in in solitude and just being uh, like by myself and being sheltered about like of everything, uh, especially after my brother passed away last year. Um, I used to spend a lot of time by myself, but then um, you know after he passed away, I just it, it didn't feel so right anymore. So I just started inviting all my friends over, and so nowadays I have like been visiting every week, and I'm always having my friends and having a really good time with them here. And it's a, it's just been a really good distraction and a really good way of, um, you know, putting my mind away of missing my brother so much. Um, and in where I am now, so my my house has become like a um, like. It's like a, a shooting scenario for like everything that I've been working on so far. And I created a safe space for everyone in the community to come create and have open dialogues and be comfortable with themselves. And I just, it just makes me really happy to, you know, be able to see um, everybody coming together, creating and, you know, feel like this in here, at least we can, uh, be away from uh, all the prejudices that we face and um, um, everything that has been, you know, thrown back at us that is not really positive. For today, I prepared some never seen before images um, of how my friends and I celebrate queer joy. Um, we uh, we all met here, so like all these friends that you see in the pictures, in my place to just have a nice chill day. And I wanted to try this new camera, which is a large format Mamiya. And um, so this is like the, the resulting images of everything that I've been, you know, created with my friends so far. And for me, like celebrating queer joy is exactly uh, what I have been able to create here in my place. Being able to be um, just comfortable with my friends. Uh, you know, I see, uh, I don't know about you, but when I go out with my friends and, you know, we're loud and we're happy and, um, expressing our joy all the time, and I feel like sometimes you do you just see people who do not identify with us feeling bothered about you know how loud and how proud we are and um, how happy we are and how we enjoy ourselves and even the dialogues that we have with each other. Um, and I feel like that you know being in my place, uh, being here, it's been somehow you know. Um, a way of like uh, fostering everyone and just like actually being able to talk about everything and uh, without being judged and um, create all of that and and it's just like it's been a really good payback for me to 
actually hear my friends saying that whenever they're here, whenever they're creating, whenever we are together, and whenever they are in my house, they just feel this great joy and this uh, safety. And, and I think that for the queer community, it's really important to feel safe at times. Uh, you know, uh, Brazil uh, is the is a country that kills the most uh, because of like uh, transphobia crimes. So, uh, you know, having a safe space, having a place that we can all be happy and be ourselves is really important to us. Um, let me move forward. So this is all the images that I've been um, shooting with the Mamiya, which is my new camera, and has been really fun trying it out. So for these images, I'm going to show you a little bit of like about shooting film and how, like what kind of images and, and cameras that I've used for, uh, for the photography. So the Mamiya 645 1000S is a very old camera and it's used for slow photography. So slow photography is what we consider when you actually have to pause, set up everything and actually have the time to put all your image together. Um, and it has like a really a beautiful quality. The, the negatives are just so big. So the quality of the scans and the prints are just beautiful. Um, it does require you to actually, you know, put it up in a tripod um, and setting up everything and waiting for the perfect time for, for you to photograph, but the results are just incredible. For these images, I use the uh, Acta 100, so the Acta 100 is being shown here in these first images. Um, <clears throat> so the 100 is the ISO. So it's more for like daylight and brighter, um, brighter days. When I was shooting this film, I was actually shooting in like uh, an overcast day, but I think it just works really nicely. It gives these like blue tones and hues to the shadows, which are quite, uh, I find quite nice. Um, I am having an issue with the focusing screen for, for this camera, but I actually think that it works really nicely for, you know, this beautiful ethereal kind of look into the images. Um, and especially for portraiture, um, it just makes everything feel like a dream. And honestly, that's how I feel like about my life as well. Like everything that I've been living, it's, it's been a, a big dream. For the Kodak Portrait 400, it's warmer tones, as you can see in these, uh, in these images here. Um, it's more like uh, neutral, it doesn't have like a, a huge contrast, which I find quite nicely to uh, photograph black skin. Whenever I'm photographing um, like my, my Peter Black folks, um, I find it really important to try and capture the, as much information as I can in skin texture and skin tones, which I find that sometimes other photographers, they uh, over exaggerate in uh, photographing and making like dark skin, like really, really dark to the point where you miss uh, the pixels, miss uh, information on the hair texture. And I find it very important for us to, you know, um, to actually feel like our hair texture is a reason why we should be proud. Um, and uh, it is beautiful, like every other kind of hair. Um, when photographing black people as well, I always, I'm always concerned about taking them to, the, to like um, have like a nice even light because sometimes we can get um, like various skin tones in one skin type, like just in your face and have different uh, areas where um, it's more like, sunburn and the other is not and like for you like um we also have um sometimes issues when shaving with like our hair follicles it's a condition that you know the darker your skin is the more uh, uh susceptible to actually uh get your pores to get um infected so the softer looks and the softer sh like the the softer light the more diffused light it helps to even out all these points and um, and I think that it gives like a, a nicer result, a more even look, like you can see um, in this image here. So this portrait of um, Azula, um, you know, like I always look for a nice shade and so I can have like even out like all the skin tones and I don't have a lot of work with editing. You can get a bunch of hair texture in this image as well. And there's really no need to, you know, just over exaggerate all with the editing and making the dark skin look even even darker to the point that it's fake. So I think that you know, with at least with my photography, I always make sure that I get some like natural looks for everything. Um, Quick question. When, sorry, yes. 
this came up uh, and I'm actually curious to you, if you stop right here, um, the photo on the far left, did you use like a different lens for that? Since the background almost looks like uh, the trees look so, warped, did that come from the camera? Yeah. I think that comes from the, it's the combination of the camera and the lenses. So for this one, I used a uh, 70, mil uh, 70 millimeter uh, lens and it's 2.0, which is a very wide lenses. So the wider you shoot, the more uh, uh, a blur background you have in the subject in focus, which is also quite tricky for you to get what actually what you actually want in focus. I wasn't using a tripod, so like every slight movement might get like, uh, you know, you, you might miss your, your points of focus. Um, but it was the same ones that I shot on these other images here. So everything here has been shot with the Mamiya and the 70 uh, millimeter lenses. I don't have other lenses to shoot uh, with this camera. Um, but then depending on the setting, so like uh, with this portrait of Sylvia, uh, the hand portrait, this portrait of Cezanne as well, it's all been shot with uh, 2.0. And that's why it's like, it's quite tricky uh, to get the focus on point. Um, and then, so for these uh, images, that one here, I shot with the Nikon F70, which I'll, I'll mention soon. So with this camera, like it's, it's easier because it's like semi-digital, like it has a digital camera body, but uh, it uses film, but it allows me to, um, you know, like do, like make faster decisions. So whenever I'm photographing with the F70, I can have like aperture priority or speed priority and not worry so much about like setting up and getting the right exposure the moment I shoot. So I can have, you know, uh, things that are happening on the go, like movements, and um, you can get like everything natural without having to stage anything or missing a photo. And this is like my uh, go-to camera whenever I'm happy to shoot um, something that is like for a client, but it's also, I get the freedom to uh, to choose to photograph a film. So with this one, I always make sure that I have everything on focus, that I always have um, everything correctly exposed because the, the light meter works nicely. Uh, when shooting film, like uh, a good tip is always to uh, expose for the shadows instead of the highlights. Film captures a lot of details in the highlights. Um, so you don't have to be so worried about overexposing the image so much or having like blown out highlights. Because then when you go into post-processing, like you're able to capture, like to retain all of this information that has been um, captured on the highlights. And if you do that with the shadow, if you do like if you go like uh, underexposed and if you get uh, an image that is too dark, um, when you try to, you know, uh, regain all of that on, on Photoshop or post-processing, it's, um, it, it, it works really poorly and not like digital, like in digital, you're able to, you know, get like regain a lot of this information. But when it comes to uh, film, I find it really hard and it just gets like either a fake kind of grainy look or the colors just stop being look, uh, looking natural. Um, so for these uh, shot here, for example, of Eduardo and Nicaru, um, so instead of like exposing for the, for the highlights and the background, I exposed for his skin and went two stops up to so ex overexposing for uh, two stops. And um, I don't think I've edited anything at all in this picture. And the good thing about photographing film is that you already have like all the colors delivered to you, you know, and that's, I think, the magic of photographing film, um, you know, um, it's just everything is just so magical and uh with each film you have different looks and different different colors with these uh the one that i photographed this image the kodak vision 3 is a rewinded uh cinema film so it's taken out of these uh film cartridges and put into 35 millimeter uh cartridges so but with that i actually never know what the results would be like i've, I've gotten like uh um images that was just completely different and had like uh, a bunch of like um, grain and dust in it, which artistically was quite beautiful and the filming markings in all of it as well. This one is a really clean shot. Uh, I do have a lot of grains and everything, but I was actually quite surprised that this is how I got the picture because um, I was expecting like a, a totally different look. But when it came out, I was like, I was, I was just in love with it because I, I this is like one of my favorite shots from um, 
days later we spent together shooting with the uh, Mamiya, shooting with the Micron F70, and the, the four different kind of films that I used. Uh, so on the left, this image of Ikaru. Um, so you, you see Ikaru a lot in my pictures. Um, this black and white film just, it was my first time using it and I'm addicted to grain and this is just super, super grainy. It's actually like uh, made to, for you to shoot at night. It's much better because of the, the high ISO, but I made a decision of photographing during the day and I don't know, this just looks like just came out of a magazine and uh, there's just like no editing at all. It's just a picture of how it came out. Um, and I, you know, I, I really like this, like how this film worked for like black, uh, dark skin tones. It's just so beautiful. Um, and yeah, let me sure. I think I covered everything when it comes to shooting film. So I'll talk a little bit about like, what is the difference between my editorial work and my personal work and how like everything just like are tied together. So, so like every time that I, I've been like uh, requested by a client to photograph for them, um, most of the time I do have the freedom of choosing, like I was doing the casting, like do the, the, not just the photography, but also the production. So um, whenever it's up to me to do the casting and hire the whole crew for, for all the photos, I make sure that I always include my community into it. So um, whenever I'm working, I'm working with people that come from the peripheries like me, that come from like less privileged areas and um, um, I usually have more tendency to, you know, go through like struggle, struggle financially. Um, the, you know, the, the peripheries is not really being like well looked after by the government as the South side and the, like the Porsche areas and the more touristic areas of Rio. So uh, we have, you know, it's difficult for us to just move around to get to the city, uh, to get to other places and, uh, you know, just work in general. Um, so like that's, the one thing that I love about my work the most is like being able to actually, you know, um, help and give back to my community for everything that I'm doing. Um, and the LGBTQI plus community, uh, especially the black community has been the protagonist of my work since I began. Um, and I always try to, you know, try to keep this like uh, a value for everything that I do. Um, so when, and I think that that's how it, it links between my personal and my editorial work, because you see these familiar faces, um, you know, like repeating themselves in what I do for, um, just for fun or just for my own portfolio and what I do, uh, for other clients with, uh, paid opportunities and paid jobs. Um, so I always try to, you know, create something that is diverse, that really represents, um, everything that Brazil and Rio has to offer. Um, and, um, it's just, it just makes me really happy and, you know, like, and I see how, how much that, uh, adds value to other professionals as well to see that the work is, uh, you know, um, it's being represented and it's being valued and that there's like a payment and retribution for like everything they've been doing, because it's a lot of hard work to put, you know, um, creating, creating your own portfolio and putting all of that together. As soon as like I started for real with photography, and um, he was like kicking out uh, his uh, career model, we both needed to create our portfolio, and uh, Ikri and I just started this like wonderful friendship and uh, like a collaboration, and like all the time we're just like shooting together, and either to like uh, even when he's just visiting me and we've just got nothing to do, we're just gonna shoot something. And um, I see how much that has affected uh, his, his modeling career and also my portraiture as well. Um, and, uh, you know, here you see this, uh, which is, uh, that's her. She's like a, a very talented, uh, great artist. You, you can see the arrow, right? When I, when I use it. Okay, cool. Uh, so this is a wonderful uh, braid, uh, like braider, hair braider. So she, we did together these, um, sorry, my slides are a little bit slow. We did together these two photographs here. So she did the hair and she invited me to do the, the photography. And, and this is something that I do a lot whenever I have time with, with my friends. Like I, I don't charge anything. Like if I have the time and I can do something for you, um, I'm going to photograph, uh, photograph for free because it's a good thing for me to have images from my portfolio as well. And I know 
that uh, it is important for them to be to be able to have images that really um, I don't know like um, makes the work um, just stand out and like you know look even better. Um, <clears throat> so you know with the editorial, whenever I had the chance like uh, to hire someone, I've hired her. She was a model uh, for this campaign. And a lot of the times I don't use professional models. I just use my, my actual friends. And um, this is just wonderful to give them opportunities to, you know, um, be represented, to feel good about themselves. Like um, I think that very often campaign has left uh, left out, um, you know, uh, black LGBT, uh, LGBTQI plus uh, uh, members just left out in general. And And with this, we just feel like, are we not worth it? Are we not? pretty enough like what is wrong with us and when in fact there's nothing wrong with us at all you know um and <clears throat> i just like i really feel like you know with everyone that i've photographed and uh, all the feedback that uh, the models the my subjects has been given to me has been so positive in um you know how they see themselves from my pictures how uh, pretty they feel from my images um having their um you know their image uh, dignified um, and this, you know, it's truly um, rewarding for me as a photographer. <laughs> I love this image. I do too. It's, <laughs> it's like the end of a shooting. So this, this is a photograph of Canva. And um, at the end of the, of, the, of the campaign, we just decided to shoot, um, you know, a picture of everything. So here we have uh, the makeup artist, the models, my assistant. And as you can see, like, I. You know, I'm always working with these like beautiful, um, wide range of people. Uh, you know, skin tones that vary from you know beige to really dark black, and um, and this is like, you know, see how happy they are in this image, and also working with them makes me really just extremely proud of everything that I've been doing. Um, I come from a very poor family, so it's like, um. Have having achieved what I've achieved so far and everything that I've done with my work, um, it's really incredible. And it's like these are things that I've never imagined that was going to be possible, like at all, at all. And um, sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. I was actually going to ask you, like, how far do you think we've come i know we of course still have so much more to achieve as far as representation with different communities and uh within like the editorial world but do you feel that we're at a good place do you feel that we're moving in the right direction or do you feel like there's still a lot of work to be done and especially from your perspective and you're also bringing a lot of your culture and family and friends through it like where do you feel like we're at today in 2023 yeah i feel like there's still a lot of work to be done but um <clears throat> we we have come a long way and to the point that we no longer need to um feel like we have to occupy spaces that were are going neglect to us for, for a long time we are able to create our own spaces to um, you know, like uh, not depend on um, you know, like uh, like whitewash places or spaces that were you know uh, not really designed for us or just used as you know just used as for their own benefits for marketing reasons and so on. Uh, we are able to like finally tell our own narratives and create something that is from us to us and. Um, and I think that this is like, uh, you know, seeing, you know, um, black people realize that it's, it's just beautiful, you know, um, and um, that's the thing that I'm just like the, uh, proud of the most of like uh, seeing other creatives, like, you know, using the culture, being proud of the culture, putting all of these together, um, you know, uh, it shows, it gives us hope that, uh, you know, we don't need anybody else. We can, we can do this on our own. I think what we all appreciate about your work is that you're showing the joy and the black joy. And, the, you know, like that's something that I feel like actually is still has a much longer way to go. I feel like images um, of people in our community that are happy 
are unfortunately pretty hard to come by. And I think yeah. that's something, yeah. And if you agree, please let me know. I, I think that it's really, this is something different too about your work that um, happens every day that doesn't get shown a lot. And I really appreciate that. And we all feel that we all respond that way to your work. Um, I didn't really, like I told you, I didn't really notice that it was that deep until I dove into your work. And I was like, wow, I'm actually not used to seeing us smile as much as we do. We smile every day. We have a lot to yes. be smiling about and proud about. I feel like one of the reasons why um, I decided, because when I, when, I when I started photography, um, it was always like important for me to have a purpose. You know, like when, when I was photographing for the first time, I was photographing because I was doing biology. So it was all related to the wildlife. And as soon as I started to uh, do portraits, I fell in love with people and culture, anthropology and everything. And like everything human interests uh, interest me. Um, and then, um, you know, after leaving overseas for a while, I moved back to Brazil and I was like, okay, so I want, I actually want to be a photographer. I want to make a living out of this. Um, but, you know, what do I do? Like, I want to do like a, a documentary, something that is personal and is meaningful as well. Um, and I was like, well, my own community needs attention. My own community needs representation. So why not start from there? And instead of allowing others to, you know, exploit and, uh, you know, um, document for their eyes uh, are like what we go through, uh, why not do that myself, you know? Um, and that's when I started photographing the uh, the Black queer community from favelas, peripheries of Rio. Um, and that was like a result that was like immediately uh, like gratifying, like just as soon as I started and seeing how um, they reacted to their own images, like, oh, is this me? Like, is this how you see me? And I'm like, yeah, that's actually like, that's who you are. Um, that's just who you are, you know? Um, and you actually seeing it from a point of view of someone that admires that, you know? Um, <clears throat> and um, I don't think that, I, I don't know if they realize yeah, how how happy that makes me, and um, it's it's <laughs> that's it. Like it's been about the joy of our joy and making us happy and seeing us happy since the very beginning, and being able to actually do that and not just from um, you know from an artistic point of view, but actually from in, employing other people, giving opportunities, and because um, that's it. Like we want to be happy, but we also want to have our bills paid and everything. So um, these like really means the world to me. I'm gonna move forward a little bit. So that you get, yes, I'm sure. Uh, we, just we too, too emotional to carry yeah. away. <laughs> and this is the um, best part because this is how you're showing like how we can achieve that on Visco. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is like um, it really, really is like uh, my work is all about love. It's about like my love to um, to all of you and. Um, the love and respect we have for each other as well. <clears throat> okay, so for the more technical parts, <laughs> I'm just gonna quickly go through like like how I edit my mobile pictures on uh, on Visco. So I like Visco. I've been using Visco since 2014. It's like the very beginning of my photography and uh, when I started traveling and everything. So I had Visco even before I had Instagram. Um. So um. It's like it, it's been so nice to actually be like you know, um, realize that I've come to the point that now you know I'm I'm presenting you know to like all of my audience on this coast. That has been so great to me so far, um, and I'm really happy that I'm able to share some tips and um, give you some advice on how to achieve you know um, this beautiful film look even through your mobile photography. Um, anyways. So this is an image I took at the beach with my friends, uh, with a Sejra and Joyce. Um, this is a mobile picture I took with my iPhone. And I'm just gonna go through like step by step from the very beginning of how I edit my image and to adding the borders, because I like to have these like kind of like beautiful framing that almost look like a, you know, a museum piece or an artwork uh, being exhibited in the wall before posting on Instagram. So for this image in particular, um, I use the Fuji Pro 160 S. Um, I just love, I love how it makes the colors pop, but it's not exaggeratedly like uh, it's not exaggerated, like overly saturated. 
uh, the colors are popping. I have like a nice contrast to uh, the background and the subject. Um, so with the Fuji Pro 160S, you do have the option of adjusting strength, corrector, and the warmth. So I first go on to corrector, uh, just to make sure, because like, if you go up a little bit with this film, you will get like a more contrasty look. And if you go uh, down a little bit, then you have a more of a like faded shadow, like uh, washed off uh, kind of look. Um, so I go, I went up a little bit with the corrector so I can have um, a little bit more contrast. The strength is up to 12 because I really like how the, the film works. If you go down a little bit, you have, you know, like it goes back to more of the natural and the original look. Um, and I just added like a little bit of warmth because this image was shot on uh, on a very overcast day and that gives like uh, cooler um, looks to the images. Um, then I go on into adjusting the sharpness. Um, I do like my images to be quite sharp. Uh, 2.0 just works perfectly. It's not too much and I think it's just the right point. Um, here you can see how I like to use my uh, grain like like I said before, like I'm, I'm addicted to grain. I love grain in my pictures, um, but I like fine grain. So I use like, I go down with the size a little bit, like uh, mine is 1.9. So the grain is not too large. Um, and then I go up on the strength. So I have, you know, the grain uh, all over it. Um, so like usually when you zoom in, you're able to see better the grain as uh, in comparison to like a zoom out picture. So whenever you're adding zoom uh, grain into your physical images, zoom in a little bit so you know exactly the the right amount of grain you added to the image um so next one um, i'll go up with the shadows a little bit just recover some information on the on the shadow parts um if you go up with the highlights you actually like turn the highlights a little bit down um, and there was like a lot of light coming in and i just wanted to like adjust the brightness a little bit um sorry i'm trying to move forward but it's stuck again no worries <laughs> um, yeah so wait okay so since i went up with the with the shadows like i'm compensating a little bit with the contrast because uh when i move uh up the the shadow slide i do you know lose contrast in the shadow um so i recovered information by going up in the shadow slide but then added back uh some contrast uh later um after that so here's a before and after so i'm done with my image uh and what i always do i crop the image to instagram size i add the border up to 2.0 because uh later when you see uh when i go cropping again back into the into the uh instagram format it gives like the just just a perfect even amount of borders so it like it just speaks perfectly uh to the image so you save it to the camera roll uh then you cannot just crop the image right here because otherwise uh it'll give you the the full picture again so you have to save it to your gallery uh re-upload it and then crop it again with the uh four by five ratio of instagram and then finally you you save it again and then you have your final image with the little uh, borders around it um and that's how i do like all of my uh social media postings on instagram um, here I'm sharing a couple of recipes, uh, like Maya said, uh, these will be handed to you. Like you can also like just get in contact with me via either the DM on Visco on Instagram as well. And, um, I can share like all my Visco tips on recipes and how I added the photo for this image. This is like my recipe for a backlit image and give like this very nostalgic feeling and a more of a grainy uh, of a film look. So I'm adding like effects. The Visco app also gives you effects of like light leaks, uh, grain, dust to really get the, the film stimulation. Um, and this is one that I really like. The M3 filter works perfectly for black skin. And I think that it gives like this beautiful, uh, like mellow or uh, tone to the image. And I added some, some grain and some um, uh, film dust just to make sure so the film does at this point here, just to get like this really nice old school vibe. And yeah, so I hand it to Maya now. Yes, amazing. <laughs> We're celebrating Pride Month. Um, so we wanted to select, um, or have Rodrigo actually select some images from our featured space, Everyday Forms of Queer Joy. Uh, but Rodrigo, let's get into what are your your picks? Sure. And we'll talk about them. So first one, 
Um, sorry, I'm having to slide problem again. So first one, these images. Uh, so Organza is a drag queen uh, from Rio. Um, I've actually personally uh, met her a couple of times, even photographed her during uh, party and events. Uh, so the reason why I chose, I chose this image by Anderson, like uh, I, I know Anderson already. Um, he's a great photographer and has been like photographing the queer scene in Rio as well. Um, so it's also someone that, you know, like we find inspiration on each other. Um, I love this image because you have all the lines just like drawing into the middle and having her in the center of the whole image. I love the makeup. I love the, uh, the styling. And even her legs help, you know, guide the the viewer into, you know, the center of the image, which is like the main the the main thing itself. Um, I love this image by Nick. Um, they really like, they really got me confused with this one because I at first I thought it was like a like a backstage kind of photo. I, I really thought that was the mirror. Uh, and it wasn't until like like looking at this image like for the third time so I was like oh this is actually a street vendor it's not a mirror at all like she's just like reaching out to the counter and it's just like and I read the title you know Queens got hungry too and you can see she's hungry and uh, it's just beautiful I love the color I love how sharp it is even though it's throughout the night um, then again I chose this other image by uh, Anderson. Um, just in Portuguese for now. Uh, Anderson, parabéns pelo trabalho. Você está tendo uma delicadeza muito grande de fotografar na comunidade. E eu estou vendo a sensibilidade no seu olhar. Está cada dia mais bonito. Está ótimo. And, uh, yeah, just so he doesn't speak English. So just he understands what I'm talking about. There is just, like, this beautiful moment of intimacy. And I think that this really, you know, uh, it brings me back of like, what the nightlife in Rio is, actually is. You know, it's about fun. It's about loving each other um we're not you know we're fearless when it comes to uh showing body and uh you know being close to each other and um i just love how the you know they both stand up uh in the in the image and there's this red light that makes them pop up even more and bring warm into what is actually happening it's a really you know warm image uh although it's you know uh being dominated by the blue color and which is like a colder tone this is just it's just beautiful. This image by Coquette, it's gorgeous as well. It's a self-portrait. And, you know, as a photographer, you know how hard it is to get, uh, you know, your self-portrait right sometimes. Uh, it's quite challenging. And I think that she did it right nicely. Like, uh, the expression in her eyes, uh, there's some cultural elements to what she's holding to as well. The hairstyling. Um, I love monochromatic, monochromatic images. So the the dominance of blue, uh, it's beautiful as well. And I think that everything just works. So um, that's why I love this image. 